Okay, we're now into 4.4, and uh, let's draw a quick triangle to just start us out. So uh, we know that if we were to take this guy here to be our uh, angle, then um, we could define all the, the sine, cosine, tangent, secant, all those guys, all the trig functions um, in terms of this angle, and we would express it in terms of the opposite side and the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. Okay, now let's put this triangle on the xy plane. Okay, so we'll start 4.4, and we'll use this triangle here, this right triangle, to, uh, to introduce the ideas in this section. Um, if we had this angle here, uh, strategically placed here, um, and we wanted to talk about the sine, the cosine, the tangent, all those guys, um, we would express it in terms of this being the opposite side, right? Opposite the angle, this one's next to or adjacent to the angle, and this one we call the hypotenuse. Now, let's throw this triangle onto the xy plane. Okay, so here's your y axis, and here is your x axis. Okay, so now we are going to express it a little bit differently. Um, this angle that we have would be any angle from, the, from 0. Um, up to wherever, right? Here or there or whatever. Now this adjacent side is the measure of what? Of x. This is x now. This opposite side is y. And we'll call this, uh, this side here, the, the distance from the origin to this point here, this point x, y. We'll call that r. Okay, so this we just call R. So it's like the, the radius, you know, the radius from the center to the point x comma y. Um, so now these, uh, these things are represented a little bit differently. And so now the sine of this angle, uh, we could still say it's opposite over hypotenuse, but then we could also say the opposite side is y over, and then this we would call R. And the cosine would be x over r. And the tangent would be opposite over adjacent, or y, y over x. Okay. And the, uh, the cosecant would be the reciprocal of this, would be r over y, and the secant would be r over x, and the cotangent would be x over y. So they're defined a little bit differently. It's uh, a bit useful to do that because if we then um, start going beyond um, angles that are basically would be within the first quadrant, say if we went from here all the way to there, we could, uh, and we just put a, a point out there, a point x, y. Well, then, I mean, this isn't, I mean, if we were to draw a triangle based on, uh, you know, this point all the way down to, like, here or, or something, we were to try to include this angle in a triangle, that's not going to be a right angle. Um, but it does allow us um, to talk about the sine and the cosine of bigger angles than, uh, say, between 0 and 90. We could go beyond 90, we could go all the way around the circle, and what it turns out to be is just kind of like... Um, you know, if we draw, drew a triangle here with some other angle, uh, it wouldn't be theta, but it would be some other angle. Uh, it's really like the, uh, the opposite side would be still y, and the adjacent side would still be x. And so this, say the, the sine now turns into not a ratio of the opposite side to the, to the hypotenuse, but the uh, y value, like the vertical value, to the, um, the distance from the origin. 
okay? But uh, you can look at it and it, it kind of looks the same. The, uh, the opposite over hypotenuse idea still holds true if we can um, uh, use this angle here as a, as a reference. And so that's where we'll call this theta 1. This angle here is, is exactly that. So you see this big angle here. This is what we'll, we'll call this dark blue theta or, or purple theta. I don't know what color that is. Um, so here is the angle. But this angle is the one we would make to use to make a right triangle, and so this is what we call the reference angle. Okay, so it's the uh, it's the angle between the uh, terminal side and the nearest horizontal. We could call it that. Uh, so if we were to throw down some other planes here, we could say, "Oh, this is theta from from here to there." But the reference angle would be this little guy right here. The reference angle would be the one between the terminal side and the nearest horizontal. Okay, so the rate, the uh, reference angle will always be between zero and ninety. All right, so um, that's the idea of a reference angle. And these reference angles can uh, help us to find the trig values, the sine, cosine, tangent, so forth, of some really common angles, not just ones in the first quadrant like 0 and 30 and 45, 60, and 90, but we can go past that. We can go to 135, we can go to 180, we can keep going on and around the circle. Um, for instance, if, if I were to go around to here and say this was um, 225, 225 degrees, um, and I want to know the uh, the sine and the cosine and so forth of of this angle. Well, I I could still use triangles to help me find that out and, and reference angles. Uh, so, what would be the angle between here and the nearest horizontal? Well, this much is 180. This much more is my reference angle. So, if I take my 225 minus 180 then I'll have that angle between the terminal side here and the nearest horizontal. So I'll take 225 minus 180 and get 45. So this angle right here is 45 degrees. And I know everything about 45 degrees. The only thing I need to change is that the x and the y here are going to be negative and negative. Okay, so I need to adjust accordingly. So this is going to be uh, a negative value. This is going to be a negative value. So this x, y, x will be negative, and y will also be negative. So when I go to find the sine and the cosine and such, I need to remember that uh, these two values are negative. So if I look at the sine of 45 uh, from previous sections, we know it's uh, root five, or sorry, root two over two. Root 2 over 2. So the sine of 45, we'll draw that over here. Okay. So the sine of 45 is root 2 over 2. That must mean that y could be root 2 uh, and that r could be 2. Right? Opposite over hypotenuse, root 2 over 2. Well, this guy over here. This uh, y is going to be the same as that y, only it's going to be negative. So it's going to be negative root 2. Uh, and that's messy, so let's fix that up a little better. So that'll be negative root 2. Make that look negative. Um, and um, the cosine is root 2 over 2 as well. So that means the x, right, the cosine is x over r, root 2 over 2. Um, so now we know that this x value must also be root 2, only it's a negative root 2 instead of a positive root 2. Okay, negative root 2, comma negative root 2, and so this must also be 2, right? And this r value will always be a positive value. So now if we were to look at the sine of 225, we could find it. The sine of 225 is going to be. Uh, let's look here, y over r, so the y value is negative root 2 over the r value, which is 2. Uh, the cosine would be uh, also
also negative root 2, oh sorry, this should be negative, negative root 2 over 2, uh, and the tangent of 225 would be uh, y over x, y is negative root 2 over negative root 2 for x would be a positive 1. Okay, so using reference angles, we can work our way all the way around the circle uh, and find the sine, cosine, and tangent for those common angles, not just uh, 30, 45, and 60, and 90, but uh, uh, 30 degrees from the, the vertical, 30 degrees from the, the horizontal, 45 degrees uh, in this quadrant here, all the way around the circle. And uh, in the next section, which is when we go to, back to 4.2, um, we'll develop something called the unit circle, and that'll be a good reference for all of those common angles, their sines, cosines, tangents, and so forth. Um, so that's a, a look at the intro stuff, just uh, uh, reference angles and uh, using reference angles to find the, uh, the trig values for even larger angles than the ones in the first quadrant, angles that we call obtuse angles. Uh, so then we'll go on in the next video to do some uh, sample problems.